Good evening, Easton. I'm Carrie Rapolo. I'm Jason Daniels. <laughs> and this is the Shoveltown Scoop, ECAT's news program. All right. So here's the scoop for June 24th, 2015. According to Niche.com, Easton, Mass. has been named the 25th best suburb to buy a house. This is based on home values, property taxes, housing costs, and the age of new home buyers. A high ranking indicates that a suburb attracts residents with a good housing market where property taxes and housing costs are in line with value. So this is not to be confused with best suburbs to live in. So they have a lot of different rankings. It's very interesting. I tell people, go ahead and um, check out local.niche.com and their rankings because they just came out with like their 2015 list. So it's very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure you can make an argument for Easton to be the best suburb to live in, period. For but sure. maybe not on this list. <laughs> 25 is pretty good. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so we've got some town hall information coming up here um, today. On Wednesday, we have a Board of Appeals meeting and the Audit Committee. Um, and then on Monday, the Conservation Commission and Board of Selectmen are meeting. The Board of Selectmen will be at Frothingham Hall. That'll be at 745. And the reason why they've moved the location is because they're making this a public event. They expect a bigger turnout. This is where they're going to be discussing the proposed intersection improvements at Washington and Elm Street. If you go to the next slide, I actually have a map of that just to like kind of give everybody an idea of what's happening. So. This is where Washington Street, which is Route 138, and Elm Street meet. That's by Buddy's Union Villa. The Grange is there, right? The um, Bob Ski Do. Bob Ski Do, right, um, on the other side. And so what they're they're going to be talking about is improving that intersection because it is fairly dangerous. They're going to be talking about inserting some traffic lights, some crosswalks, and making it a straight of way um, Elm. They're going to kind of straighten out Elm Street so that it aligns with the other Elm Street. Um, so they're going to be talking about that next week on Monday. Right. Yeah, so. we've been asked to cover, like always, cover yep. cover that meeting. We're going to try to broadcast it live, too, even though it's over at Frothingham Hall. Perfect. Okay. All righty. And then uh, don't forget, this week is the bulky item pickup, which um, if you've already done so, you know, you, this is a great thing that they do. It's the old grills minus the propane tank some larger pieces of um, furniture, stuff like that. You can always check out the list. You can go on to easton.ma.us. They have a link and then there's a PDF to uh, what exactly they will take and what they won't take. So you're just asked to put it out uh, one large item curbside for pickup on your regular trash day. And this is for the waste management customers only. And just put it out by 7 a.m. Okay, so congratulations to the Girls Youth Soccer League coming up here. Um, the U14 Girls Soccer Team won the South Shore Soccer League Championships, and they're going to be headed to the Massachusetts Tournament of Champions, um, which is going to be held in Lancaster, Massachusetts, on June 26th through the 28th. So congratulations to them. Yeah, ditto. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. All right, and then Y just wants to remind the community that if they're interested in taking any gymnastic classes for the kids, summer class signups are happening now, and you can head over to the Old Colony YMCA website to check out everything that they offer, but there's a few classes there um, geared towards kids that are basically 12 years and younger. And this is the new gymnastics center, is that right? It is, yeah, it's on Barrow Street. It's really great. My kids actually take classes over there. Um, Shannon Dutra is the... Uh, director she's awesome so uh, yeah check it out if you want to all right all right and then uh, don't forget on Saturdays from 10 to 2 is the original Easton Farmers Market that's held over at 591 Depot Street that is at the bend there right before you get to Shaw's uh, on your right hand side and it's great they have all sorts of local artisans and farmers that come out and um, really handy people that are making things and it's a wonderful thing to go to you can bring the kids get them involved in that right a lot more than just veggies it is yeah like p they, people bring uh, make their own soaps and lotions and bring all that stuff and honeys and it's really cool nice yeah okay and then simpson spring always has something going on oh whoops the pulled right. pork yeah that was last week but anyways just wanted to let everybody know that the marketplace is always open uh you can go over there from 10 to 2 on saturdays and uh they do a great job of yeah know, hosting stuff all the time 
And then just wanted to remind everybody for Save the Date, Sunday, June 28th from 11 to 4 over at the Governor Ames Estate. They're going to be hosting their Juried Legacy Art Exhibition. Um, and that is, yeah, that's going to be a nice day. Art, music, food, fun, all sorts of great stuff. Yeah, we, know, we actually have a little promo video that we, uh, one of our interns Excellent. made. So let's, uh, let's give that a whirl. All right, Carolyn Cole. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn Cole. I'm chair of the Eastern Shoveltown Cultural District and I'm here at the Governor Oliver Ames Estate which is going to be the site of our second annual Art Music Food Fun Festival on June 28th of 2015 and the festival runs from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. and it's cram-packed with a lot of activities. Now, one of the activities we're doing is canoeing on the pond and we will have canoes and we will have people monitoring them on a beautiful day it's just a wonderful thing to get out there and explore the ponds that are part of this property and we're going to have a jury art exhibition and in the tent we'll have music all day long the last musical event which will end the day will be a children's interactive entertainer and we have a wonderful scavenger hunt planned the scavenger hunt is in search of Stegosaurus. The families and children will be able to search the grounds and find clues of dinosaur activity on the property. Ed Hands, our local historian, is going to conduct walking tours of this property, as well as there will be shuttle tours or walking tours, whichever you prefer, to all the um, historical buildings in the Northeastern Historical District. Now don't forget the date, it's June 28, 2015, and I hope to see you all there. Great, looks like a fun event is planned. Yeah, absolutely. Coming up this weekend. All right, in the Eastern Rec Department, I'd like to remind everybody that they have Ultimate Frisbee going on. This is for boys and girls entering grade eight through adults. These are going to be held Wednesday evenings um, all the way up until August 12th. So you can um, go for pickup game or sign up in person. It's about $40 per player. Hmm. Right, and the Ames Free Library has some things coming up here. They've got a lot going on so I just ask people to go to their uh, amesfreelibrary.org and you can check out all the events. But they're going to have their Mystery Book Club meet up on Thursday, June 25th from 3 to 4. They're talking about Dark Places, a book by Gillian Flynn. And then on Monday, um, Easton resident Wayne Potash, he's going to be there at the Quisit Gardens outside from 5.30 to 6.30 on Monday. He's a um, always a favorite of the kids. I, I know my kids enjoy him. So Yeah, yeah, real nice guy. Uh, yeah. And did a few sh shows over here oh, a couple he? years ago. Maybe <laughs> yeah. we'll get him back one of these days. But yeah. always puts on a good show. Yes. And then this was the uh, this past weekend um, over at the Old Time Fair. There was a just a fun bocce tournament, and uh, these pictures are courtesy of Jason Daniels oh. right here. Right? So right. <laughs> well, well, actually, the bocce club sent them along oh, to me, good. and then okay. I and I forwarded right. them along. Oh, it looks um, like everybody had fun anyway. Right, but I guess this is how it's supposed to work. Take a picture of your an event. Yes. Send it to us. It we put it on the news. Look at that. All right. It shows up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, fireworks. Yeah, I, this is a week early, but I just wanted to give people plenty of time to think about what their plans are for the 4th of July. If they want to check out some fireworks that are happening in our community, uh, Sharon's going to be hosting them on the 3rd, as is Walpole and Stoughton. And then the Brockton Fairgrounds does it the 3rd, 4th, and the 5th. And then um, over in Canton on the actual 4th, they're going to be hosting that over at the Irish Cultural Center at dusk. So a couple of options there for families. All right. What do we have? Oh yeah, the children's races are coming up. So um, this is a this is a great thing that they host over at Free Frothingham Park. They're held Thursday nights at 6 p.m. Um, from July 9th to August 20th. They're ages 2 to 12, and the races are run by gender and by age. If it's raining, the races will be canceled. But every child gets a, a ribbon and a popsicle after they complete it, and they can run as many times as they want through the evening. It's really cute. All right, yeah, and it's running all summer long, so yes. it's uh, definitely something to... You will see us there. All right. And then we have uh, Moscato's Musings with Eastern resident Ross Moscato. Hi, I'm Ross Moscato. Back in 1996, during President Bill Clinton's first term, a book written by First Lady Hillary Clinton, It Takes a Village and Other Lessons Children Teach Us, was published. The title of the book was inspired by the African proverb, It Takes a Village to Raise a Child. 
The book, its contents, raised the stir. Conservatives jumped on the statement, claiming it downgraded the importance of family, which they believed to be fundamental and most important to bringing up children, and promoted government oversight and intervention in raising young people to early adulthood. Well, from my standpoint, I think there is a lot of merit in supporting and advocating for both a family and a village helping to raise a child. I hope conservatives and liberals, Democrats and Republicans can agree on this. This past weekend, it was wonderful to see on Facebook all the tributes my Facebook friends made to their fathers. Of course, most of my Facebook friends are Eastern people. Either they grew up here or moved here. As for those Facebook friends who, like myself, came of age in Easton, it was tremendously heartening and soul-enriching to view accolades and expressions of love for fathers I knew growing up here in this community. Fathers I knew, as is the case today, helped out not only with their own children, but other children as well. It was about a family and a village. I have been so fortunate to have had the love and support of a family and of a village. My life has been charmed and blessed. I have known a tremendous amount of success and happiness in life, more than I deserve. But as well, I have done more than my share of screwing up. And I have experienced a good deal of darkness, believe me. Yet it is so much because of family and the village and the support both have given me that my screw-ups have not destroyed me. It is so much because of family and the village and that both have required of me accountability for and the need to learn from the screw-ups that I have not been irreparably broken. No, I have become stronger. I ask that in your own lives, reflect on those who have helped you and been there for you. Express gratitude, thank them. No one makes it on his own. No one makes it on her own. Yes, it takes a family and a village. Thank you for watching. All hmm. right, thanks to Ross. I have to agree there a little bit. Yes, yeah, so great, great food for thought there. <laughs> yeah. I know without my family and friends, uh, it'd be hard. It'd be harder. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about this. ECAT's hosting the uh, film sprint. Film it's sprint. Back. Yeah, yeah. 48 hours to make a film. So you definitely, definitely want to check this out. I think it's a fun, uh, fun activity for the summer. And uh, it's been led by students, OA students, for the past four years. And that's kind of how it got, uh, got going this year. So that's we're great. pretty excited. The registration opens on June 28th. Okay. So we're hoping teams will sign up. Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got a deal with a, with a, a company to print out t-shirts for the oh, competing teams. Cool. And the winning <laughs> team, uh, there will be judges. Well, there's also a uh, cash prize. Oh. So it's a... Uh, not Exciting. just making the film, but you oh. actually have a chance to win win something too. And it's limited to eight teams. Yes. So get get in there when uh, the registration opens on June twenty eighth, and then you have all weekend to uh, on the yeah, weekend to, of July tenth. Right to get yeah to yeah. get no sleep and, yeah. and and make a really really cool awesome. film with your friends. Oh, that's great. Or family or all right. Whatever. Well, they can contact Jay Jay Jason Haven or we call him Jay around here. Yeah, yes. absolutely. If yeah. yeah, if you have any questions about how this would work, or yeah. whether you uh, you know can get involved or something like that, uh, yeah, give us a call 508-230-7200. Ask for Jay. All right. All right. All right. Well, thanks everybody, and uh, until next week. Have a good week. Right. Good night. <laughs>